Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. I am live with you guys today to paint a birthday hat door hanger. Um, of course, it's still my birthday month. <laughs> we all have those annoying friends who are like, it's my birthday month. I'm going to be a princess all month long. But no, I am not still stretching out my 40th birthday celebration. I'm actually painting this birthday hat because the Painters Clubhouse is celebrating its sixth birthday in the month of April. And so uh, we got together on Zoom last night and uh, there were several of us who chatted and talked and shared, uh, asked questions and just talked about all kinds of things. And um, I, I am so grateful for that Painters Clubhouse community. They are wonderful. They support me. They support each other. I'm always encouraged and inspired by them. And in the background here, I've got my husband. Say hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. <laughs> He's not comfortable being on camera too much yet. Although if you watched last Tuesday's live, he did join me on camera just a little bit. He was kind of like way off on the side, trying to get out of camera view as much as possible. And we talked about ways to be creative and um, use it as a form of self care and why that's so important. So that's a good one to go back and listen to. If you missed it, I'm going to need you to turn that down, please. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Uh, hey, Linda. Hello, Jacqueline. Hi, Joanne. Hey, Barbara. Yuna says, I love the hat. This is a design that we had um, in the shop for a little while now, and I just never did have the paint chance to paint it. Now, the one in the shop, I think, is like pink and baby blue or something, but you know me. That's not enough color. So <laughs> I picked out some colors to use on this project. I swatched them on a little scrap piece of paper to make sure they all went together really well. And I was struggling with the pink. I was like, I really wanted to use the new Deco Art Tea Berry color. It's more of a coral, but it didn't feel like it fit with the others for a birthday. I wanted birthday to feel more like confetti colors. And so these are the ones that I went with. Now this yellow may be a tad bright with the rest of these colors, but I think it'll be fine once we get it painted. Um, so the colors I have here are cadmium yellow, carousel pink, teal mint, purple cow, and ocean blue. And then we're just going to use white. Um, and so I'm thinking we're going to paint the base of the hat white. We're going to do a polka dot in each color. One, two, three, four. There's only five. There's five polka dots, and this one's pretty tiny. So whatever color. No volume once you turned. Oh. Is it because I turned your I know. iPad down? No, I don't think so. It might be just be something on her end. Sometimes some people have trouble with audio and everybody else will be fine. Uh, somebody said, good afternoon. Love the Painters Clubhouse. Best decision I made to join. The community is so uplifting. Thank you for that. I don't know who this was because it's showing up as Facebook user. Um, it's probably because we're streamed live into uh, one of our groups right now, the Door Hanger Painting Tips group. So um, it, it could be that one. I can't see your name. So if you want to come join us over here on the Southern Adornments Decor Facebook page, you'll see everybody else's comments. You can also watch from YouTube. Hey, Christine, watching from Ocala, Florida. I bet the weather is beautiful down there. My mother is in Fort Myers, Estero area. So it's gorgeous weather down there. All right, let's get started. Oh, what I was saying was I was painting the background of the hat white, and then I'm going to do a large polka dot in each color. And I thought... Whichever polka dot that I do, maybe like right here, because it's not touching the top or bottom, I might use that color to do also like the hat brim. I don't know. We're going to figure it out as we go, as usual. Um, also, is anybody curious about the question mark behind me? Nobody's asked about it yet. I am surprised. What are you doing? Don't you dare un unveil that. I didn't. I'm, I'm you looking. better not let them see. <laughs> Our workshop wait list is up. <laughs> his, his curiosity was piqued by that well, question mark. Our workshop wait list is up. So if you want to get a hint as to what our workshop design is going to be, I want you to follow the link. Um, I'm going to put it down in the comments too, just in case anybody can't find it. There is a link that's going to take you over to the page where you can click to, or hover over to see a hint. And you can put in your name and email and it will notify you next Monday when it's time to start signing up for the workshop. You'll be able to get in early, get in the Facebook group and all the things. But it's going to be happening April 16th and 18th. We're going to be painting um, a design together live um, and it's going to be a blast. And we've tweaked a couple things about the workshop this year. It's going to be a little different than some of our other workshops. We're going to have something called After Hours, where if people join the Painters Clubhouse, they'll get to join me after hours, after the workshop. Um, 
to uh, chat on Zoom. And so that's a really fun new feature of the workshop. Hi, Brenda. Tina's, no, Tiffany. Tiffany Masto, Mastos <laughs> is watching while she's painting bowling keychains. Like she means like bowling, like bowling, bowling. Oh, I guess so. Like for kids on like a bowling team or something, maybe. I say kids, adults are on bowling team too. What are the dates? April 16th and 18th. Hello, hello. Hey, Becca. Glad you guys are able to join us. If you want to get the template or the wood blank to this one, I have put the link to that in the video description also. Or you can just head over to shopdoorhangers.com and search for birthday hat. There's also a free birthday cake template over there you can download to go with the hat. Um, what was I going to say about it? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Uh, but definitely head on over there to the workshop page and get on the wait list. Oh, it's her church's bowling team. Oh, okay, cool. Sarah said, I think we should get a sneak peek since we signed on. I hear you trying to tease me or trying to tempt me to show you. Y'all feel free to drop your, your guesses in the comments if you want to guess what you think it might be or have like a, a theme guess or something like that. So Lisa Westmoreland said uh, she missed the Zoom last night. Is there a way that she can watch it? Yeah, uh, Lisa, I just finished um, pulling the, the recording for that and getting it to our team. So they should be putting it up for you guys to watch um, probably by the end of the day. And Amy Iverson says she's looking forward to seeing you in April. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing you too, Amy. That's going to be so much fun. Just a few weeks away. Like I said, thank you for my birthday surprise and my last order. You're the sweetest. You're welcome. <laughs> nah, I'm good. He's over there sipping on a Diet Mountain Dew trying to get me to partake in the caffeine. Y'all know I get a little jittery when I drink too much caffeine on a, before I sit in the paint. <laughs> Sarah said, spill the tea, please. I need something exciting. I'm dragging at work and trying not to fall asleep. Oh, I can't spill the tea too too soon. I've got to. I can reveal it next Monday. Um, but I am I am dying to reveal it because I have had this designed and painted since January. What? It's an art, Corey. Yeah, I know. Um, but I've had this one designed and ready since January, and I've I've been so excited to reveal this one. This is probably one of my more favorite door hangers that I've painted in a long time. And I feel like it's going to be pretty versatile. Like you'll be able to change up, change it up based on your color preference and stuff like that. Uh, Gina Flippin guessed a retro car. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Not giving it away. <sighs> Tiffany Lasso's birthday is on Mother's Day this year. We have another exciting announcement around the week of Mother's Day on May the 3rd. If you want to mark your calendar right now, May the 3rd is when we are going to resume selling the final tickets to Southern Adornments Live. And if you already have your ticket to Southern Adornments Live, we're going to start selling the Dolly Experience tickets. So that's May the 3rd. That is the Friday, two Fridays before Mother's Day. And so um, if you know you want that for Mother's Day, drop some hints to your your kiddos or your husband or whoever and they will um, you can you can just tell them to email us or something like that or you can just send them the link on the day on may the 3rd to go and grab it sherry overman guessed a spring barn painting and linda holthauser said that she said she said it looks like a car but I'm that good. but the there's a printout on the back of that page so i mean that's just you use some scrap paper right yeah I had to use something circular to cover up my template because that is the actual door hanger hanging up behind there. Yeah. And I had to use something circular to cover it up. So I just typed a template up there. And Laura Davis is hoping for an old red truck. <laughs> Amy says, can't wait. Definitely need the Dolly Experience add-on. Cassie says, still need to book my room if it's not too late. It's not too late, but you just need to call the Wilderness at the Smokies. Just call that resort, tell them you're with us, and they will make sure you get in on that room block. Janet wants to do the Dolly experience. Sarah, it's not as far away as it seems. It's only like seven months. I, I mean, we're going to blink and it will be here. So it just, just hold on out. It'll be here before we know it. 
Um, Vicki guessed a retro truck design, and Sarah had a question. She said, uh, is the Dolly experience the same as the VIP thing we got uh, for signing up the first day at the the last essay live. No. So what you're talking about is like a VIP experience. That was for the people who signed up on the very first like day that we um, offered ticket sales to people who were at the event. The Dolly experience is going to be something that's happening the day before the event. So this will be on Thursday, November 14th. Um, and we will all head all over to Dollywood together and have a wonderful time. And we'll all go on a bus together. We'll have a meal together. It's going to be a great time. Uh, so will, will the Dolly experience be expensive? Um, I can't say just yet. I can't. Uh, I think, well, actually, no, I can say. I forgot we had decided the price. It's going to be one ninety seven. Chevy truck or 69 Camaro is needed. Oh, I Ooh, agree, Becca. We, I like love, we love us a 69 Camaro. Yes. We actually just went to a car show this past weekend. And Cindy Fowler wanted to know, how do we get a sneak peek? Uh, you got to tap the link that I put in the comments. Here, I'll put it down there again for you. And it's going to take you over there. And there's a little thing you can hover over and it will reveal a, a hint. Okay, let's pick our colors for this. I'm kind of trying to think what I'm going to want down here. I think I kind of want to use this teal mint for this area down here. And then um, maybe I'll do a different color on the top, like the pink or something. And so I'm going to do these first. That way it'll kind of help me figure out where, what colors to put where on my polka dots. If you're painting on one of our wood blanks, go ahead and just paint over those letters. Don't worry about it. You still will be able to see them through the paint. If you're painting with a template and you have cut out this piece with like a jigsaw, scroll saw, bandsaw, something like that, um, you can either like trace your details with like a Sharpie so they'll show through the paint or you can like just trace it on as you go. So maybe you want to paint the main colors and then come back later and paint in the um, that are, are, and then trace on the, the words and stuff like that last. Because with a shape like this, it's really easy to like realign it to, to trace it again. The car show was local. You had yes. somebody asking if we went to Pigeon Forge for the car show. Oh, no, but they do have a lot of really good car shows. We've, I've been in Pigeon Forge before when the car shows are going on. How much again did you say was the Dolly experience? 197 and so those will be sold May the 3rd. So if you don't have your ticket to Southern Dormants Live yet, uh, we'll be selling those as well. I think we've got, um, I don't know, maybe like 60 spots left. It's not very many. We've already sold well over 200 spots. And so, I, you know, it may sell out, but this will be your last chance to grab a ticket at a discount. And then we will just mark them back to regular price until they sell out, unless they sell out at the discount. We'll see. Is like the workshop a Ford Thunderbird? <laughs> no, it's not a Ford Thunderbird. Although I can see why you would think that, given the hint. How many of you guys have never done one of our workshops before? Drop a comment and let me know if you've never done a spring workshop with me. Or a fall workshop, for that matter. Cindy said, what if we already have a season pass to Dollywood? Um then I feel like you could just go to Dollywood by yourself. <laughs> but I don't think we have like a way. I don't know. I haven't thought of, thought about that like part of it or how to logistically figure that out. But I would think that you would probably have to just go on your own because we only have so many spots limited with our Dolly experience. And it wouldn't be fair if we like gave some of those to season ticket holders that you know, would take a spot on the bus. Um, that's why we're so limited is because we only have so many seats on the shuttle bus and stuff. Um, putting one more coat on our teal mint. Uh, Tiffany Masso said that she's never done one and neither has LaDonna. Okay. Well, if you've never done one before, I'll give you a quick little, I must have some purple in the bottom. There's the, I keep getting like a touch of purple in this paint. Um, if you've never done one with me before, the workshops are $10 to sign up. You'll get a template that you can use. You'll get access to the Facebook group where all the tutorials are going to happen. 
and um, you'll you'll get to kind of experience what it's like to paint with um, a group of people kind of like the Painters Clubhouse because it really if you've never painted inside of a crafting group like that before especially our group they are so supportive and you're going to feel uplifted and encouraged you're going to feel accomplished at the end of the week because you will have painted a door hanger that maybe you ha maybe you've never done that before um, if you're a little worried about getting supplies there will be a kit option that you can buy or we'll give you a supply list where you can easily go and grab all the things that you're going to need um, if you cut your own pieces, you can just cut out an 18 inch wooden round, or you can run to the local Hobby Lobby or Michael's. I think they carry rounds, um, now in the wood craft section, and you can go ahead and pick one of those up and then you could just paint with us for $10. Mm, there's a few there that haven't, haven't ever done a workshop. Awesome. So what's the time period for the Dolly experience? What do you mean the time period? It says, uh, oh. What, what time? time is it happening? Uh, Thursday, November 14th. I believe it begins at 5 p.m. Um, and also, super exciting, Deco Art is putting together um, a special paint pack just for this workshop for us. Because in the past with some of our workshops, um, you guys have had a hard time finding the uh, specific colors that I'm using and stuff like that. So to make it super easy, they are putting together a paint bundle for us that you guys will be able to grab that will have all the colors except black and white in it. Oh, there's a hair. <laughs> it got painted pink. This is the carousel pink color. Hey, Judy, popping in on your planning period. How, how's your day going? Judy is a teacher. Marina says, can't wait for the workshop. Me either. It's like one of my favorite things every year. I always feel so like uplifted by everybody because there's always those people who are like, I didn't think I could do it, but look what I made. And they're so proud of themselves. It's awesome. Okay, this is probably going to take two coats. Debbie Price says she paints hair often. <laughs> Sometimes I paint my own hair <laughs> on accident. I'll go like this to like push my hair back and accidentally get my brush in my hair. I've done that before. Yeah, paint on my shirt. Paint. On, I've gotten to church before and had paint on my arms. Michael's taking pictures for the blog. <laughs> Workshop is happening April sixteenth and eighteenth. It's a Tuesday. Oh, I just got it on my arm. It's a Tuesday and Thursday night at seven p.m. Central. So if you want to go ahead and put it on your calendar, you can. April sixteenth and eighteenth, seven p.m. Central. And it'll be in a private Facebook group. Now, if you're a Painters Clubhouse member, you will not have to pay the $10. You'll get free access to it. And you'll be able to just follow the link inside the clubhouse. I believe Megan will probably be posting it next Monday. And you guys will be able to go and just join the Facebook group and grab all the things. Well, Tiffany said your shirt goes with the door hanger you painted. <laughs> it kind of does, doesn't it? It's like a little bunny with glasses. I did paint one like that a few weeks ago. I think that if you don't get, if you paint on a regular basis and you don't get paint on you, are you really doing it right? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> okay. We have our polka dots here. So I think I'm going to paint this one teal. No, sorry. This one pink and this one teal since they're touching these two other areas. And then I'll have purple, blue, and yellow left. And I kind of want to do this big one yellow and then maybe like purple here and blue here. Or maybe we'll do this one pink and this one blue. I don't want pink and teal to take over the whole thing because those are the bigger areas that are already painted. Uh, Kara's mom's getting ready to turn 80. She may need uh, one of these for her. Oh, yes. You should definitely celebrate her. Um, I tell you what, somebody, and if you're on here, definitely say it was me. Um, somebody sent me pictures the other day of the free birthday cake template that we have in our shop. And they painted three or four different ones. And they painted them different. One of the cakes looked like chocolate cake with chocolate icing. And uh, you would think that would be boring because it's a lot of brown, but it was so cute. And then another one looked like buttercream and another one looked like strawberry and then like, yellow cake. And they painted them for a nursing home. And so then when they have residents with birthdays, they can just hang these on the residents' doors at the nursing home. So I just thought that was a brilliant idea. Well, Shonda just had a birthday party last week. She could have used one of these. Yes, for sure. 
And Dave said I was late. Did you say what it was? I'm not sure what she's talking about. Um, Debbie Price. I think we're, oh, Debbie, we're talking about the spring workshop that's happening April 16th and 18th. And then we were also talking about Southern Adornments Live tickets going on sale May 3rd. And Dolly Experience, that's the day before Southern Dormants Live, is also going on sale May 3rd. Um, and we will only be selling Dolly Experience tickets to people who have already bought their Southern Dormants Live tickets. Oh, and Layla says, where do I buy the paint? Uh, the, if you're talking about the paint for the workshop, we will be putting that link on the supply list. So after you check out, you'll be able to go over to the Deco Art website and buy it. Don't you, when you, ha when you get paint on your shirt, don't you use something to get Yeah. Hand sanitizer has alcohol in it, so you can use that, or you can just use flat out rubbing alcohol. And I usually put like a paper towel or something under the shirt and then pour the rubbing alcohol on it and scrub it with like an old toothbrush or something like that until it dissolves. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, let's do this big yellow polka dot. Ooh, these colors are gonna make, make me so happy. I'm kind of feeling like we might need a little bit of splatter paint on this toward the end. Like what do y'all think? Do y'all like splatter paint? I like splatter paint. I may have to have you uh, no way shield my laptop or something because every time I do it, I get paint all over my laptop because it's only like a few feet away. <laughs> this is the cadmium yellow. You like my shirt? Thank you, Layla. This is an oldie but a goodie from cottonchaos.com. Uh, they don't even sell this style shirt anymore. It's like a it's like a heat press something or other. I don't know, but, but it's it's cute. Okay, let's do the next big polka dot, the purple. This is the purple cow. Tiffany said, "Nice to know." She would. She was the reason I'd asked how you get your stuff, how you get paint out of your shirt, because oh. she said she can't wear a nice shirt when she paints. Oh yeah, if you know how to get the paint out, it doesn't matter too much. <laughs> Amy said that she loves splatter paint; it covers up all of her mistakes. Doesn't it though? It's just great. Okay, um, <laughs> this one's gonna be blue. This is the ocean blue color. Uh, Bruce said she's used hand sanitizer to remove paint from clothes. Yeah, the hand sanitizer is really nice because you almost always have that handy. So if it happens, you know, and you've got hand sanitizer handy, especially at like a paint party or something, you can usually quickly get it out. Hey, Autumn, long time no see. Autumn used to join me on almost all of my lives and I haven't seen her in a long, long time. So I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Did Facebook drop me from your algorithm? What happened? <laughs> Uh. Okay, going to put one more coat on this. Autumn, we have a spring workshop coming up. If you if it's been a while since you painted with me, you can come join us April 16th and 18th. I'll drop the link again in the comments for anybody who's just now logging on. Um, the link that I'm sending you isn't the sign-up link yet. The sign-up link won't be available until next Monday. So this is just giving you a hint as to what the design might be. And you can put in your name and email to be reminded. It's been a crazy year. Well, I hope everything's okay with you and hope you're doing well. I'm so glad to see you again. Have you decided if you're taking your colorful wood wall down and just, I don't know, Amy, I go, I go back and forth. I, I love it still. And I still feel, feel like people love it. So I kind of am tempted to like repaint the boards and just paint them more like my new colors. But then I'm kind of like, well, I kind of want to put like an actual door on the wall to hang door hangers on. So I don't know. I kind of keep going back and forth. I like the pallet wall. Yeah. My husband didn't want me to tear it down either. He really likes it. So drop your, drop your comment. Give me your opinion. Should I paint over the boards and paint and like maybe take away the yellows and the greens and the blue and like keep it the colors you see in the background, like the teal, the pink, the purple. And, and white, maybe? Or should I tear it all down, start over, and put up, like, bolt an actual, like, wooden door to the wall with hooks on it to hang a door hanger? Maybe paint, paint some, like, splatter paint. Not, not like, split, split, but, you know, paint, paint splotches on the wall. What if you did both? How? Put a door in the middle. And then, I can't have this sticking any farther out than it already is, though. No, no, you did. You do a door in the middle, and then on each on each side of the door, you can you have your pallet wall. Are you going to cut out a hole to fit the door in? 
Because what I'm saying is, is this already sticks out about two inches from the wall. A door would stick out another three no. inches. I already struggled not having enough room back here. But you take that, you take that off the wall, and then you put up instead of one big panel, you put up two panels. And oh, you have your door in the middle. I feel like that's a lot of trouble because then I'd have to like rebuild the pallet wall. It was already a pain in the butt to build the first time. Let's see. That sounds like a lot of work. Uh, there's a lot of repaints. Of the wall, leave the boards, leave it, repaint, uh, leave it like it is. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so far I'm hearing everybody say don't tear down the wall. <laughs> okay. Slice it in the middle and put a door on each side. That's kind of what I was thinking. I'm like, if there's a way to like cut it, cut out a chunk, but then that might be kind of funny looking. I don't know. Emery loves it just as it is. I'm the kind of person though that I get tired of the same color all the time or the same anything, furniture, whatever. I want to like redecorate, repaint a room after like three years. It doesn't take me very long to get tired of something. And so I'm in this room a lot. And so I'm constantly like, I should do this. I should do that. <laughs> uh, you could paint a fake door or three doors so you can hang multiple. Yeah, I thought about painting a fake door, but I definitely would have to take the pallet wall down if I did that. Two doors and, and the wood in the middle. Okay, our dots are painted. I feel like the purple and the yellow might need another coat real quick. Um, Teresa Cleaver said, hey Tamara, uh, I just opened my box of all my wood cuts from birthday bash sale. I'm so excited. Felt like Christmas. Yay! I'm so glad you got them. We shipped out over a hundred orders after that birthday sale. You guys loved the sale, so I'm so glad we did it. See, now Brenda likes my idea. What's your idea? As far as the... Oh, taking it down, building around it again? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. Okay, what do you think about our colors? They're pretty happy, huh? You like them? All right, so for the splatter paint, I'm kind of like wondering if I should paint that before or after my lettering. I kind of think I should probably do it before and then paint the lettering on top of it. So let me get my little fan brush here. Where'd it go? Little fan brush. It's great for splatter painting. This feels like a small flat band brush. I thought I had another one around here. Oh, here it is. And we will splatter with this. Okay, I'm going to take the same five colors that I just used. And I'm going to water them down for our splatter paint. This is clean water. You don't want to water it with dirty paint water. Um, water down the purple, teal, blue, the pink and the yellow. And then I'm going to mix each of these colors. Oh, Emily Hunter said, what if you put up, a, put a window up and hang the door hanger on it? Yeah. Thank you guys for the suggestions. You should tell them about, um, the trailer. The trailer? Yeah, when we first oh, <laughs> that's one of his favorite stories. Mm -hmm. When we first got married, um, after our apartment, we moved into a single wide trailer. And so before that, we'd been living in an apartment. And you know, in an apartment, you can't change anything. You can barely hang things on the wall. And so when we moved into the trailer, I was so excited because it was 100% ours. We could do whatever we wanted to it. And I was like, everything was white, white walls in every single room. And I'm like, I can't have this like this, no color at all. And because I was a little overzealous and super excited to be able to paint walls, I went and bought so many colors and I was like, every room's going to have a different feel when you walk into it. And some rooms had more than one feel in each room. <laughs> Uh, I think, and it was one of those where it's like an open concept in the middle of the kitchen, dining room, living room, but I wanted it to feel like three separate rooms connected. And so I painted the dining room section one color, the kitchen section one color, and the living room was two different colors. And I made, you know, you live and learn. I made the mistake of like matching 
the walls to some pillows that I bought. Like I had a feet focal wall that was like bright orange, like pumpkin orange. It was a pretty orange. It was just a little bright for that big wall. And then the side walls were like a darker green. The living room or the dining room was like a lime green because I love lime green. I was matching my kitchen dishes. Why not? And then the dining room was like teal. My brother walked in. Oh, here's the inspiration dishes for the kitchen and dining room too. I still have them. And so as you can imagine, this is kind of what my living room and kitchen felt like. Here you go, babe. Whenever you walked in and my brother walked in for the first time after a painting, he goes, why does this room feel so familiar? And after a few seconds, he goes, oh, it feels like the Mexican restaurant we always go to. <laughs> I was so offended. <laughs> ah. But, you know, it was one of those things where you learn, like, you know, I should not have gone that overboard with, with like that many colors. So fortunately it was just a single wide trailer. And when we moved into the house we're in now, I was a lot more conservative. Would you say I've done a better job in this house? I mean, you didn't do a bad job in the trailer. He's being careful with what he says. No, no. Like you asked me, you're like, hey, do you care if I found like you can paint whatever? And that is one thing. He's been very good about letting me do whatever I want decoration wise. Brenda says she loves the dishes. As long as you allow me to play, continue playing trees, we're good. I got rid of that entire dish set except for those bowls I just showed you because they're kind of like a large salad bowl. They come up on the sides and we kept them specifically for taco salad oh, nights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Michael will only eat taco salad in those bowls. Okay, let's do some splatter paint. I've got all my paints kind of watered down here. I'm going to start with this bright blue or the not bright blue, ocean blue. I dipped in that. Um... Will you cover up my laptop keyboard a little bit? Find a piece of scrap paper or something. Because I'm always making such a mess with this. Okay. He's using my son's report card to shield it. We're good. Uh, so for splatter paint, you kind of just coat your fan brush in watered down paint. And then you just tap. And I didn't get enough on there because nothing's coming off. And the more you tap, the smaller the dots will get. So, you know, you start out with like larger dots and then it, they're going to get smaller. And I don't want to do a ton because we're going to switch and do all the colors. This is going to be like confetti by the time we're done. Okay, now I rinsed it out. We're going to go with, let's do the teal mint. And I might not do as much of this since this whole bottom part is this color. Okay, this is so fun. Uh, purple next. Purple hey, your mom's watching. Your mom? Yep. Hey, Kathy. Okay, purple cow. I need have a little. Have you ever more. seen a purple cow? I have not. I've heard it's a drink, though. Oh, that's right. That's right. We we were talking. We about googled that. that one day on a live. Yep, we did. Kathy says, "Love this baby." <laughs> uh, pink now. Be a little more generous with the pink down at the bottom. This is turning out so cute. And now yellow. Look how quickly we did this too. Okay. I'm going to be a little more generous with the yellow at the top because I think it'll show up on top of that pink real well. That's why I wanted to save the yellow to the last. I knew it would like be the most vibrant. And so I was excited about that one. Okay. Let me get a baby wipe out. Clean up my desk before I get this all over myself. And then I'll dry it and we'll answer some questions. We'll do like a Q&A real quick while this dries. So if you have a question about choosing paint colors, what brushes to use, cutting out door hangers, selling door hangers, I don't care what your question is. Drop it in the comments and we'll do a quick little Q&A. Oh, I almost made a big mess. <laughs> I just nearly dumped my entire ice cube tray over in the floor. Okay, let me show you this splatter paint real quick up close. Look how fun. That is cute. Super cute. Missy said there's a <clears throat> restaurant in Kingsport, Tennessee. Purple cow. Okay. I've never been there. With a purple cow on the front. Jacqueline says splatter paint is perfect for this party hat. It's like confetti. It is. It's so fun. And I think we're going to do the lettering like in black or something on top so that it really just pops on top of everything. Hey, Sherry. Thank you, Shirley. No questions? Or are you guys thinking really hard about your question? Uh, yeah, watching. 
Don't forget to go put your name on the spring workshop wait list so that you can be notified next Monday when we reveal the design. It's going to be $10 to paint live with me April 16th and 18th. Amy says, what do you do with all your door hangers that you paint live? What do I do with them, Michael? They go into a tote and then I'm going to be hanging them up in the shop. Uh, they start to accumulate after a little while. Sometimes I donate some. Um, like Uncle Corey will do like, they'll do like silent auctions where he works to raise money for people who've like lost their home in a house fire or who knows, all kinds of different things. Um, and so sometimes I donate them for silent auctions and stuff like that. Um, every now and then I'll give one as a gift to somebody that I know would like particularly like one of them. But for the most part, I would say 95% of them I hang on to because I will probably need it for something in the future. Either that or that's just my belief about it. <laughs> Tammy asked, do the PC sisters need to be added to the wait list? You don't have to, Missy, but if you want to, that will kind of give you like that little nudge on Monday of next week to look and see what the design is, and you'll be reminded. But it's not a commitment. Like putting your name on the wait list is not going to like, it's not going to cost you anything. It's just your name and your email. So it'll just make sure you stay notified about everything coming up to do with that. Um, it's going to take a little while to dry all this splatter paint. Uh, Missy said, um, what did you say? She was late getting on. What did you say about the Dolly Experience? Oh, the Dolly Experience is going to be like a VIP day the day before the Southern Adornments live event. We're going to take a, um, a tour bus together over to Dollywood and we're going to eat together, look at the lights together. Christmas lights are going to be up. It's going to be a wonderful time and it's going to be $197. There's only going to be 84 spots and we will start selling those on May the 3rd through Mother's Day. Um, also, we will be selling tickets to Southern Dormants Live. So if you missed out on getting a ticket to that, there's about 60 spots left. So we're going to try to sell those remaining spots. And it'll be your last chance to grab those at a discount. I'm going to say that a purple cow is vanilla ice cream with grape soda. I don't remember. Kind of like a float? Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. I don't remember seeing that as one of the things. That sounds a lot better. Sherry says, my problem's writing names. My handwriting is terrible. I'm going to enjoy how, how do you do names etc um i'll give you some tips as i letter these how about that if you're probably if you're struggling with that i would definitely say practice like on some cardboard or something get you something to trace so that you kind of aren't feel like you're don't feel like you're having to freehand it um marina said um she's already on the text list does she need to sign up on the wait list? Yeah, we ask that you guys go ahead and get on that wait list if at all possible, because it just helps us figure out like who to send the emails to and who to notify and all the things. Um, kind of helps keep our records straight with all that. Uh, Jane, I believe it's going to be begin on November 14th at 5 p.m., the Dolly Experience. I haven't 100% nailed down the details to that. I'm trying to decide if 5 p.m. is early enough because I'm kind of like, well, maybe we need to go at like 3 or 4 o'clock. I don't know. We'll see. I might I might decide that a little closer to time, but I would say definitely be in Pigeon Forge by noon that day just to make sure you're there on time. <laughs> you're glad you ran across me. Well, welcome. Okay, I'm going to find a small filbert tip brush, maybe, to do this. Yeah, it's trying to decide. Um, and then I need black paint. Mm -hmm. Okay, another tip anytime you're painting lettering is to water down just a tiny bit your black paint or your whatever paint you're using for your lettering. It'll just help it to flow a little better because if your paint's very thick at all, you're going to struggle getting um, getting your to form your letters right. Okay, I'm using a filbert tip brush. You can see it's kind of curved on the end just a little bit. I'm going to get a little water on that brush and then dab it off on my paper towel. I'm going to pick up some of that black. I'm not loading it all the way up to the ferrule, the metal part, just halfway up. Now, the lettering is already etched on this door hanger, so all I have to do is paint inside these lines. And I can still see them through, through all this paint. Now, to do like an area like that, that's almost the same exact width of my brush. Um, but this little area right here that I'm fixing to do is skinnier. So I'm going to kind of put my brush up on its toes, kind of like on the tippy toes to do that little skinnier area. And then I'll put it flat down on its belly again to go down and make that. And then at the bottom, there's a little serif. So I'm going to put it up on its tippy toes to make the serif. 
Uh, Diamond Burnthorn said, does block poster not allow certain size images? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't used block poster in a long time, but I do think they ha probably have an image um, limit, size limit. So if you're struggling with that, go to Google and type in like image compressor or size compress, uh, like something like that that's going to compress your image into a smaller one so it's not as many like megabytes or whatever. Block poster is what I used years ago to create templates. Now we use like Adobe Illustrator or something. <clears throat> Marilyn Newsom said uh, that she's known your mom for a long time. Oh, how do you know my mom? Are you in Florida with her playing tennis? I shall be home before too long. Yeah, they're coming home first week of April. They spend their winters in Florida playing tennis and enjoying the warmer weather. I'm sure they're glad they're not here today. It's colder here in Kentucky today. Also, look how slow I am. I mean, I'm probably not nearly as slow as some of you guys might be painting these if you don't have much experience with it, but this is pretty slow compared to like how I painted those polka dots and stuff. I'm, a le I'm much more like precise when I'm doing lettering. Um, so Hannah Matthews wanted to know, will it, will the, if I buy a dolly experience, will my spouse be able to join us? Um, they would probably need to buy the Dolly Experience too, because like I said, they only ha we only have so many limited spots available on the bus. Okay, for this, I'm going to do each of the large areas with my filbert tip brush, and then I'm gonna come back with a round tip brush and connect them. So this is another like hand lettering hack. If you struggle with a filbert tip brush doing all the areas, this part of the lettering is actually script. And so it's got some areas that are really skinny and some areas that are pretty thick. So I'm, it's going to look weird for a minute because I'm only going to paint in the, the fatter lines. Um, Missy uh, Radliff said if your husband is coming to Pigeon Forge, would he have to buy his own ticket to the Dolly Experience or could we buy two Dolly Experience tickets and he ride the bus? Yeah, if you buy two of them, he can definitely come with us. And then Jennifer Bland said, how do you decide where to put the black and white accent marks at the end? Um, I just kind of look for areas sure. that look like they need a little bit of like definition. Did you say I wing it? Yeah. That is the truth. But um, <laughs> I kind of just, I don't know. I look for areas that look like they need a little bit of definition or if they feel like they got lost in the painting, then I'll do it. I don't know. We'll try to get to that here at the end and I'll explain it. Um, I've switched to a little round tip brush now and I'm going to go back in and kind of just paint in those skinnier lines. Um. Marilyn Newsom said that, uh, no, she, they used to live, uh, we lived in Harris Grove next door to each other. Oh, you guys go way back then. That was my mom's childhood. Well, I will tell her that you said hello through Facebook Live. <laughs> and Shirley West said watching you is good therapy. Aw, thank you. If you think watching me paint is therapeutic, painting it yourself is even more therapeutic. Painting is so good for you, like mental, good for your mental health. It's good for processing stress and grief and just channeling your emotions through art. It's all coming together now. See how the letters are connecting?
you know, we could put some plastic down. I need then, to dry this because I keep sticking my hand in the areas that are already wet. We could put some plastic down on the floor and then just do splatter paint in here. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. He thinks we should do splatter paint in here on the walls and stuff. It would be too tiny to be noticed on camera. It almost has to be like hand painted large fake splatters. You know what I'm saying? Unless you have little large globs of paint. Oh, paint. that would definitely take a lot of like protecting the floor, the carpet, everything. I mean, I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. You just like to make a mess. That's true. Where do they, <clears throat> where do they start um, the Christmas lights and the uh, I think it's the first weekend in November. So we're going to be there like the second weekend, I think. So they'll already be up by the time we get there. And I think the lights in Pigeon Forge and the surrounding areas in the town begin around that time too. It's going to be so fun. Um, Rosemary Crawford said she totally agreed in regards to... Um, uh, painting being good therapy mm -hmm. when she lost her husband and son painting it saved her it's definitely a great way to process your grief i'm not sure exactly how it works what the science behind it is but dixie brown knew where i was going <laughs> she said channel your your inner jackson pollock yes look at that lettering how fun Okay, now for adding just a few little finishing touches. Okay, this is something I probably should have done for my splatter paint, but it's okay. Um, what I'm going to do is take each, uh, or take like this, this color right here, the teal mint, and add a little bit of white to it. And make a lighter teal mint. And then I'm going to probably use that to, to add like a little bit of an accent around the bottom of the hat because I want it to be kind of subtle. I'm so afraid, afraid if I do it with black, it's going to detract from the black words. So, you know, you got to keep that kind of stuff in mind when you're thinking about adding accent, like highlights and things. Okay, Wet my brush. I've got a little round tip brush here. So I created just a lighter shade. This is teal mint and white mixed together. It's almost like Bahama blue. And I'm just going to use this to trace out our little hat. I don't know that it would have mattered if I did this before or after the splatter paint. Do I need to look at you or taking a picture? <laughs> Is your camera roll full of pictures of me painting now? Or have you been deleting them after you send them to me? Uh, yeah. You've been deleting them? Yep. <laughs> Don't want to keep those forever, do you? Zero dark 30. Yep. <laughs> what does that mean? Um... Jane Bright had said that she would uh, leave Murray at 4 a.m. to get to the mountains. Oh. <laughs> and um, then she said, or as the Murray in the room would say, zero dark 30. Yep. We're going up several days early. Okay, for the pink, I'm going to do the same thing. Add a little bit of white to my pink. My pink's already a little watered down, so we'll see how this goes. I think it'll be all right as long as I'm careful going back and forth to my project and don't drip it and make, well, <laughs> would it really matter if I did drip it? We got splatter paint all over this thing, so it probably wouldn't matter. Uh, Missy said, uh, I don't know about the talent part, but she said if you wanted to do a door for your wall behind you, as talented as Michael is, couldn't he cut you something that could resemble a door, but not have the thickness of a door? Maybe. 
Yeah. Oh, that is not that is not the color. What did I? I'm just I thought I no, I thought I picked up teal mint, but I think it was because there might have been some purple under the teal mint that I squirted in there, and so it did not look like teal mint. Um, I was trying to take that original teal mint color that we painted down here and trace out the sides of my my hat. Kind of add a little bit of detail. I don't like that. Okay, so quick tip, learning lesson. If you don't like it, get your baby wipe out and just wipe it back off. Before it dries. Before it dries. And the problem is my baby wipes dry now. <laughs> it's okay. Just re-wet your baby wipe and keep wiping it. I didn't like the way that looked. So maybe I'll just leave it. Oh, and I just swapped. I just messed up one of my... Uh, Splatter paints. It's okay. I fixed it. Baby wipes are great for everything. Maybe I'll just leave it. Maybe it does. Maybe this is a great learning lesson here, not to, not to overdo it when you're. Because somebody asked, does it need? You know, how do you know when to add lines? And Michael said she wings it. She does. She wings it. I feel like you're overanalyzing. You're, you're making me feel nervous. Go sit down. He's hovering behind the laptop watching me clean up my mess. Well, no, I was just look, I was looking at it. Okay. As long as you keep your thoughts to yourself. <laughs> Unless they're positive. <laughs> Unless they're positive. Okay. I'm not going to do anything up the sides here because I kind of, I don't want to take away from anything. And I feel like if I add black, it's going to take it away. If I add pink, it's not going to look right. If I add teal, it's not going to look right. I think it just needs to be left. So we outlined the bottom. We outlined the top. I feel like that anchored it. So that's kind of the point is like with the outlining and things, you want it to feel like it anchors or ties the design together in some way. Um, and that's kind of the point. So hopefully you guys learned a little something there and maybe learned what not to do. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed painting this little birthday hat design with me. I really enjoyed doing it. Um, Charlie's birthday is coming up. There you are. You're on camera. Yep, there. Charlie's birthday is coming up in about three weeks. So we may hang this on her door at, um, after I get done. If you want to join us for the upcoming spring workshop or want to get a sneak peek at what um, a little hint as to what it's going to be, follow this link in the comments. Go put your name on the wait list. Um, there's also an image there you can hover across and it will give you a little hint. Um, yes, Nancy, add teal mint to your list. It's a really great color. I love it. Um, and if you want to order the template or the wood blank for this birthday hat, again, I put the, uh, the link to that in the description. Um, anything else you guys want to know before I go? Yeah, they want to know what the question mark, what's behind the question mark. Oh, I know they want You want it. Well, you already peeked and saw. Sorry, I cannot reveal till next Monday. All right, y'all. I'll see you on Friday for Friday Fab Five. Bye, y'all.